little air to breathe. This could have been the fate of the Earth. So why wasn't it? The answer lies in the moment of the Earth's creation. As the early Earth was forming, the energy released as material hit the planet produced heat. The heat became so intense that even rock melted. The lightest elements in the molten Earth rose to the surface, while the heaviest elements, including iron, sank down toward the center. Here, they formed a molten core. It's this iron core that protects us from the deadly effects of the sun's rays. Exactly how the Earth's core protects us is a mystery that drives the research of Dan Lathrop. In his laboratory at the University of Maryland, he spins scale models of the core to study how it behaves. The Earth's core has dynamo action that makes a magnetic field. And that's a process where currents in the liquid iron cause magnetic fields. Lathrop has found that the spinning motion of the core creates a magnetic shield that surrounds the Earth. We can see how the currents produce magnetic fields with this simple demo. I just take some iron filings and uh, sprinkle them down around this coil of wire. This coil of wire represents the core of the Earth. The iron filings will reveal the shape of any magnetic field. And then hook the coil up to a power supply. You can see the iron filings line up with the magnetic field lines. And the magnetic field lines are passing through the center of the coil, looping around the ends. The electricity in the coil produces a magnetic field. The same thing happens on a larger scale with the Earth's core. Its magnetic field gives our planet its north and south poles. It also extends far out into space. It's called the magnetosphere, and this is what protects us from the solar wind. As particles from the sun fly toward the Earth, the magnetosphere blocks their path. Those that get through are deflected toward the poles. Here, as they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they react with molecules in the air to create the aurora. The northern and southern lights. Today, the solar wind still erodes our atmosphere. But thanks to the magnetosphere, the loss is not life-threatening. It's been estimated that between five and 10 pounds a second of our atmosphere are dragged out into the solar wind. Fortunately for us, even at that rate, the amount of time it would take to deplete our atmosphere would be many times the life of the sun. The magnetic field produced by the iron in the center of the Earth played a vital role in our planet's evolution. Without it, we wouldn't have any air to breathe. On our clock in which 12 hours represents the whole history of the Earth, just six minutes have passed. The Earth still doesn't look like the planet we know, but could a human now survive on its surface? It's possible that the Earth may have cooled enough for a human to survive in a heat-resistant suit. And thanks to its iron core, our planet is now protected from the solar wind. But there is still no oxygen or water on Earth. We wouldn't last a minute. Worse still, 
if a human could survive, they would be in for a shock. An astonishing event is about to take place. The Earth is on a collision course with another planet and about to experience the biggest bang in its history. So far, we have seen how a giant cloud of gas and dust collapsed to form our solar system, and how the Earth's molten iron core created a magnetic field that protected the planet from the deadly effects of the solar wind. The Earth's formation was a violent and dramatic process. But an even more astonishing event was about to take place. A collision so large that it would melt the whole planet. And the only reason we know this event happened is thanks to a large object circling over our heads. The moon is the Earth's constant companion. For centuries, humans wondered where it came from. There were many theories. Some thought that it was formed by the early Earth, spinning so fast that it threw off material into space. Others proposed that the moon was a passing planet captured by the Earth's gravity. But no one really knew. In 1963, the United States launched the Apollo program. One of the mission's aims was to discover how the moon was formed. Houston, uh, Fleet 16 has arrived. Okay. Ryan, you go for landing. Yeah. Okay, down at three. Stand by for contact. Contact. Wow! Oh, In the late 1960s and early 70s, American astronauts made six visits to the moon. They played golf, tested their skills at off-road driving, and collected 840 pounds of moon rock for scientists back home to study. How about rolling that one over? No way. The pieces they brought back to Earth revealed something strange. When scientists examined them, they found that they were very dry, as if they had been heated. This was baffling. Any theory of the moon's creation needed to explain this mystery. In the 1990s, planetary scientist Robin Canop decided to put a new theory to the test. Using a supercomputer simulation, she modeled what would happen if the Earth collided with another planet. The results were a revelation. This is a, a simulation of a single impact by a roughly Mars-sized planet, shown here in the upper right, colliding with the young proto-Earth represented by this object here. So the impactors come in and hit the Earth at a very oblique angle, at about 45 degrees, and you can see this long arm of material right here. That's actually the impactor. It's been stretched out and distorted by the impact event itself. There's an inner clump of material, you can see it right here, that will re-impact with the Earth. After a little more time, this outer clump of impactor material. It makes a very close pass by the Earth. As a result of the Earth's gravity, this initial clump is sheared out into a long arm of material, which then finally breaks up to form a disk. And it's from this disk of material orbiting the Earth that we believe the Moon then later accumulates. From this simulation, Canop has figured out exactly what happened during the impact. There would have been this unbelievably large impacting planet racing towards the Earth at a speed of seven miles per second. 
This would have been an enormous object, a planet that was half the size of the Earth itself, and so would have completely filled the sky just before impact. The impact itself was an incredibly energetic event with enough energy to completely melt the whole of the Earth and vaporize a significant portion of the rock in the Earth. When the planet hit the Earth, the glancing blow smashed material into space. Much of this debris stayed in orbit as a vast disk of rock and dust. A clump of this circling material then became large enough for its gravity to suck in other matter from the disk. And this became our moon. It's now 50 million years since the Earth began to form. On our clock, in which 12 hours represents the whole of Earth history, still only eight minutes have passed. At this stage in its life, the Earth appeared very different to the planet we know. The ground remained molten from the impact for thousands of years, and the moon was 15 times closer than it is today. You can imagine what is now a stunning sight on a full moon night would have been breathtaking at that time, with the moon 15 times larger than we currently see. The collision with the planet and the formation of the moon were key events in creation.